Boston Center, Helicopter 300 Whiskey Zulu. 300 Whiskey Zulu. Uh, 300 Whiskey Zulu is departing uh, Bravo 06, requesting flight following. 300 Whiskey Zulu, roger. Clock 7345. 7345, 0 Whiskey Zulu. Radar contact now from out south of the Burlington VOR. Type of helicopter and uh, the destination. We're Robinson R44, destination is Kilo Charlie Oscar, November. Okay, Robinson 44 to Concord, thank you. I've ever not had a auto retracting pump as a button. Never had to turn the cranks before. Where are we? Concord. Concord. So I just called and asked if there's any particular place they want us to park, and they said, yeah, any any of the tie down spots that are shaped like T's. And they also said that our rental car was here. So apparently, uh, National Car Rental has a like FBO hotline where like it's made for general aviation. So if you're flying into an FBO or a fixed space operator, which is what these little airport businesses are, you can arrange a rental car to be dropped off at these small little county airports that may not have rental car uh, facilities on site. That's handy. I'm impressed that it's actually there waiting for us. This trip is, I think you're going like eerily well on this trip. I know, it's kind of sketching me I out. Know. It's like, is there wood to knock on? Is it day three? <laughs> it's already starting to blur together. The flight from Basin Harbor to Concord, Hampshire was about an hour. Flew over a couple mountains. Pretty treacherous terrain that if we had an engine failure, there wasn't a whole lot of places to go. So we always try to get a little bit of altitude over those areas. We're actually ahead of schedule. So the plan was to stop at an airport that had uh, a shower, bathroom facilities, and camp there. We were gonna camp over Labor Day weekend knowing that there were not gonna be a lot of vacancies in bigger towns. The remnants of Hurricane Ida are kind of coming up now and we're seeing the effects of that tonight. And we didn't really wanna be in a remote area camping during the rain because A, camping in the rain is not that comfortable. We didn't want to get stuck there either. We only have enough provisions for maybe four nights camping and we know we're going to be camping towards the end of the trip. And we could go back and camp at that airport for Labor Day weekend, but the problem is then we're backtracking all the way back across the mountains and we'd rather keep going forward. That's why we decided to come to this place. We saw that there was one vacant night here, so we decided to jump on it and book it. You see all these small towns that you end up going to, but you never have heard of before. And that's fine, because there's like small towns throughout the entire United States. But it's interesting to think about all the towns that you don't see when you're, when you're just driving by car that aren't off the main interstate. It's one of the aspects of general aviation. It's like you end up in these small little towns that you otherwise never would even know about. It's kind of nice. We decided to land at Concord Airport, rent a car, and drive into Getaway Blake Brooks, actually Getaway Boston. You guys suggested doing a getaway trip, and I, ever since I looked at them, I've been wanting to do one, and luckily there was one night left, so we booked it. Tomorrow we're gonna pack up. We're gonna be in Portsmouth from basically Thursday to Monday, so all of Labor Day weekend. So I thought, okay, we gotta line up a rental car. I called the rental car agency, and they were like, okay, yeah, we'll arrange it. And just because it's sort of short notice, you're gonna need it for tomorrow. I'm gonna call ahead and make sure they have a vehicle. So stand by and I'll, I'll call and do that. So they came back to us and she said, bad news, the only vehicle that is available is a 12 person van. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? All that she's got left is a 12 passenger van. Is it, is it gonna be the same rate? No, unfortunately, yeah, you're looking at uh, over $900. $900. Yeah. Like a tour van. I've never driven a 12 passenger van before. You only had that 12 passenger van for the entire weekend. Yeah. I... Gone, she'll have nothing. Wow. Okay. F it. Let's just take the 12 passenger van. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm so bad for you guys. All right. Thanks, Linda. Enjoy your van. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh my God, I can't believe you just booked that. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? <laughs> what else, like what's the other option? It's Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I know you're no right. No vacancy in the town. They're probably gonna be a bunch of people getting Uber. Is there parking at the Airbnb that we rented? I hope so. You didn't check? I mean, <laughs> So we're gonna pick up tomorrow, probably in the afternoon when the rain stops and head to Portsmouth. I guess pick up our 12 passenger van to see the sights. Might start an Uber service just to pay for the van. <laughs> 
<laughs> so after we go to Portsmouth, we don't really have a place to stay. We might end up sleeping in the 12 passenger van we rented. Lack of vacancy plus lack of rental cars. Equals. The problem fixes itself. <laughs> problem fixes itself, yeah. Let's go to this cabin before All we right. have to turn around and check out. Let's go to this cabin. <laughs> Chainsaw in the background. Let's see what's inside. Here, you take us in. This is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. This is awesome. Cool. Holy shit, look at the view out the window. This is why I wanted to come here. Oh. Wow, it's like a perfect little spot. Look at the branding with the black, the white, and the gray. Just hope you don't wake up and Freddy Krueger's out there in the window. Freddy Krueger. <laughs> a real toilet. Uh-huh. There's a shower. The space is very functional, and they've got a fire pit outside that we cooked our dinner over. It's a bit of a shift of gears when you're comparing sort of a full amenities resort experience like we were on to sort of more of a self-sufficient, small, tiny cabin in the woods. He's getting rained on. <laughs> Moment of truth. Moment of truth. <laughs> so one of them is really cooked and the other ones aren't cooked at all. Isn't that bizarre? Here's a corn. It is corn. <laughs> it's either not cooked at all, now that I think about it. It's fine, medium rare. Look at that. Okay, wait, let's test a little, little, little piece. It smells smoky. Mm -hmm. mm. It's overcooked. Yeah. But you can taste the fire. So we have this place for one night. Tomorrow we are going to get up and we are going to check out of this place and head to the airport. Hurricane Ida is still, you know, throwing some stuff up this way. We might end up having to wait out the weather at the airport until we can leave to get to Portsmouth tomorrow. So it's like a quick 18 minute flight to Portsmouth. Ida's passed. So I'm glad that we had permanent accommodations last night rather than hanging out in a tent for the whole storm. It just rained constantly the entire night. 300 Whiskey Zulu in our 44 departing from Concord en route to Portsmouth. 300 Whiskey Zulu is down and went for 3-4. I'm 300 Whiskey Zulu. You're going to be number two following a heavy KC-46, uh, six mile final across behind them. All right, that 0 Whiskey Zulu is number two. Helicopter Zero Whiskey Zulu, taxiway Alpha, wind 340 at 11, clear to land, caution wake, turbulence from the heavy KC 46. And watch that, Zero Whiskey Zulu. So we flew from Concord to Portsmouth International. So the rental car we arranged to have dropped off at the airport, and I really was expecting to be picking up the 12 passenger van. This isn't a 12 passenger van. I guess they found a smaller car. I actually was starting to look forward. I came around to the idea of having the 12 passenger van. Also, we don't have any accommodations for Saturday night or Sunday night. And I was actually thinking this, that the problem was solved because we could just sleep in the 12 passenger van. I really was expecting to be picking up the 12 passenger van, but to our surprise, it was a small little car. I guess the person at the car rental place was like, oh, these guys don't want the 12 passenger van, but we kind of came around to the idea of getting the 12 passenger van and thought it was hilarious. I don't want to jinx it, but this trip is going eerily well. It's like, there's no cars available. There's only a 12 passenger van for a thousand dollars. And then like we end up with like, a smaller car for cheaper. Like we made it here. We haven't had any delays knock on wood so far. I'm a little bit disappointed that we don't have the 12 passenger van, not gonna lie. I same. I was coming around to the idea of how hilarious it would be to drive that thing around. <laughs> Should have been ours. The one that got away. This is gonna be much more manageable, especially in a downtown scenario. This was a destination that some of you guys recommended on Instagram, so thank you for that. But it also allowed us to show you sort of the variety of different areas we're landing. So this is actually technically an international airport. It's a class Delta. There's class Bravo, which is the big boys, B for big boys, JFK, LaGuardia, things like that. And there's the one notch down from that, you've got the class Charlie, which would be like Buffalo International Airport. And then one notch down from that, you've got the smallest of the towered airports, which is class Delta, so this would be that. All right, welcome to Portsmouth Airport, Kilo, Papa, Sierra, Mike. This is a busier one. So this is a class Delta airport. 
It's a towered, so it has ATC, have full service fuel. There's no self-serve pump. Yeah, we had a rental car. People here are really nice. And there's no landing fees and no ramp fees. We're gonna park here for four days for free. What's going on? It smells like the ocean here. I feel so at home. I have not smelled that smell in years. Same. So we flew in, we checked into our place. It's a really pretty little apartment. There's a kitchen big king size bed, a bathroom, and we're like a three minute walk from the beach. Branding is beautiful, the interior is beautiful. It's very much, um, very into it. You did a good job choosing it. Oh, let's not kid ourselves. There's no choice involved. This is the only place that could give me two consecutive nights. And we still have to figure out Saturday night and Sunday night. Yeah. We're on the go now this morning, heading into Portsmouth, downtown Portsmouth. Some of you recommended this. Shout out to Smith's Leather Bomb who gave us a huge list of things to see in Port Portsmouth. I was gonna say Portland because that's kind of like <laughs> also on the tip of the tongue. So we just spent a, uh, a little bit of time in the morning in the room just trying to figure out a place where we're gonna sleep tomorrow night and the next night because there's like no availability. So slim pickings slim here during Labor Day weekend and we don't have our 12 passenger van so it's not even like we can camp in there. Dude, I thought the 12 passenger van was going to be the solution to all of our problems. We ended up with this Hyundai Accent instead, so back to the drawing board. All right, let's go. Got some lunch at a place called Tuscan Market. And then after that, we walked over to Strawberry Bank. And this was sort of like an outdoor museum, they called it. And essentially what they've done is they've preserved and restored some of these older, you know, century old homes or more in this little neighborhood. Now it's sort of a walkable outdoor museum. We kind of just walk, it's almost like walking through a neighborhood from that era, which was pretty neat being able to go into some of these houses. It allowed you to kind of see into the walls literally and just kind of be in that era and see how people in that era live. This is fascinating. Yeah, so this building has these like big glass structures that show you basically almost like a cross section ish of what's was behind the walls at one point. So this is like an old door with like a piece of a wall and you could see all of the lathe. The houses were built so different back then. Yeah. The ceilings are so low in these homes. Cool textures. I must just want to capture a couple for my own just to have in my repertoire. How much headroom, huh? No. That's the sound of a haunted house. Close your eyes and just think like, put yourself in the room and you're by yourself and you're here. You definitely know people are walking in your room, in your house. <laughs> Insane, man. Pretty interesting place, huh? Very interesting. This is the kind of stuff I like to look at. Old, decrepit. Old, decrepit houses, layouts, room sizes. It's crazy how small bedrooms were back then. Oh and God. like every room has a fireplace because there was no like electric baseboard heaters. Were people like shorter back then? Cause I keep hitting my head off the door. <laughs> Probably. It was really neat to see some of the old architecture and the peeling paint and how small the rooms used to be. And it was really cool to kind of get thrown back in time to see a little bit of history of Portsmouth. Are you calling them? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a proper cup of coffee in a while, but I'm not sure. I didn't do a lot of research and there's a coffee place here, so I'm just like, that one. Then we're gonna get fish and chips. Seafood. Seafood. When I see food, I eat it. <laughs> found a latte. It's pretty good. What did you get? Well, they had all sorts of like non-alcoholic beverages. This one was the New York egg cream. I've never heard of such an abomination, but let's try it. Mm, it's like a vanilla cream soda. I want to taste it. Yum. Yummo. Pretty good. Oh, it tastes like a fizzy watered down vanilla milkshake. So one of the things we wanted to do while we were in Portsmouth was to have a proper feed of fish and chips. We are heading to find fish and chips. I feel like, well, A, you can't come to the coast and not have a feed of fish and chips. B, I haven't had a proper fish and chips since the last time I was in Newfoundland. So that was kind of one of the goals for this trip. While we were in New Hampshire, we wanted to get some fish and chips. Then when we go to Maine, we want to get some lobster rolls. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're on a mission. I Googled best fish and chips in New Hampshire. 
Row 34 was what came up. People said it was the best fish and chips. If you are from New Hampshire and you know a better fish and chips place, leave it in the comments so that next time we come out here, we can hit it up. We'll, we'll be able to tell if it's good because yeah. we're from we're from the East Coast. That's the dilemma though, is that we come from a place, i.e. Newfoundland, that is well known for its fish and chips. Yeah. So. But it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be cod. I think it's haddock. We're open well, to try other flavors. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Parking in this town is just as bad as it is in St. John's. Like little tiny streets built hundreds of years ago that aren't really wide enough. Zero parking anywhere, but parking garages are a good bailout. We keep seeing 12 passenger vans drive by. It's like, oh, it could have been us, but we definitely would not have made it under this barrier. <laughs> That's not much clearance for me either. Yeah. We walked in, I was expecting uh, probably like an hour wait just because their open table reservations were all booked up till nine. They had a, seat, a table. Eight oysters and fish and chips, got it. <laughs> Some pot, it's good. Very good. So good. Hanging out in Portsmouth has been really fun. It was great to get to experience a little bit of a city vibe, stay on the island of Newcastle, see the water and the beach. But now we're about to head into probably the more adventurous side of the trip. The front of this trip has been sort of front loaded with a lot of our more traditional places we've stayed. The rest of the trip now is going to be a little bit more adventurous. So more of the camping, more of the little cabins off the beaten path and that's the part that I'm really looking forward to. It's gonna be a little bit more out there, you know, getting places via helicopter, landing at small little remote off airport landings. That's the stuff that I'm really looking forward to. Hey, look, I got, I got a dirty frame for you. Ew, Chris. Ew, 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 ew. Dirty frame. Stop, get away from me. Dirty frame. Hey, look, take a picture. Stop. It's a dirty frame. It's a dirty frame. Stop, there's dead stuff in that. <laughs> it stinks. We are in York, Maine. This is our first stop in Maine. We are on a mission for lobster rolls. All right, lobster rolls. Mission accomplished, we got our lobster rolls. We are gonna hit the lighthouse tonight, take a couple of pictures. Tomorrow, we're going up the coast. And we're going off grid. Watch out there, Zero Whiskey is Zulu, fly eastbound uh, now. I mean, 10 V far turn rating zero, nine or zero. I'm gonna put you out over the ocean. Now what? Oh my God, I hate this. So, so far, this part of Maine is not anything like what I thought it was gonna be like. That noise, something drop. Yeah, my phone, okay. get my phone out of there. Go around? Yep. This is the first time I think I've aborted a, a, a confined landing. The latter half of the trip right now is, this is what I'm looking forward to. This is like the exciting stuff. We get to land off airport, we get to do cool in the helicopter. That's what I live for. 